In this Debaco University video, I'm going to go over the impact of organic and mineral-based fertilizers in relation to cannabis yield. Alright, so I know there's some great debate between organic and mineral-based fertilizers, so let's take a look at it from a scientific viewpoint. First off, here is the research article. If you wanted to dive into the information in a little more detail, I provide the proper uh, citation right here. I'll give you my take on it. So first off, there were two liquid fertilizer types. There was the um, organic and the mineral solution. Both were prepared in order to contain the same concentration of macronutrients based on manufacturer provided information. Macronutrients are nitrogen, uh, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium uh, were the main focus of the study. No signs or symptoms of micronutrient deficiencies or toxicities were observed between the organic and mineral treatments. If you want to know all the details of the fertilizer concentrations, the pHs, the ECs, the um, solutions, and the compositions and ratios of the fertilizer solutions, it's all provided here for you to take a look at. But again, take a message in order to provide the same, same concentration of macronutrients despite being organic or mineral. So fertilizer concentrations and the general sequence. So the concentrations were 80 uh, milligrams per liter, 160 milligrams per liter, and 240. Fertilizer treatments were applied in liquid solution one, uh, twice per week, starting at day 22. Um, and you can see table two, which is located right here um, for more details. It's days after planting. Plants did not receive any further fertilization during the last week of cultivation. And you can kind of see the um, days here, the cultivation week, the fertilizer solution, the accumulative solution amounts, and then the concentrations at 80, 160, and 240. So all broken down right there for you. Now plant sampling, what was done here in this study was that two harvests during the stage at 22 and day 36 days after uh, planting, four harvests during the flowering stage at days 54, 69, 83, and 99, at each harvest, four plants per treatment, one plant per treatment, and a replicate um, were cut at the base and separated into three fac uh, factorial sections, stems, leaves, and inflorescence there. So this is kind of the breakdown of basically how the study was conducted. Uh, when we're looking at plant comparisons at day 36 and day 99, how did they actually look? So here's our fertilizer um, concentration for organic on the top row and mineral on the bottom row. Here we're looking at day 36 and then day 99, which is the harvest, just so you can see some visual uh, comparisons there. So it's the end of the veg stage, and this is basically the harvest there. So you can do some visual comparisons if you want between those. Now looking at the flower comparisons, um, we're looking at day 99 of harvest. Plants were defoliated to show only the inflorescence just before flower, and we can see that located uh, in the image right here. When we're looking at the source of variation, we're looking at the concentration of nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, um, uh, looking at those different contents there, we could see just kind of how we're looking at breaking those down here from a kind of table standpoint, but also from a visual standpoint. Let's get into some more what the, what this research actually did show. So looking at the vegetative plant growth, well, it was not affected by the type of fertilizer as indicated by similar values of leaf area and specific leaf area. So looking at kind of our data table right over here, when you see um, NS, it's basically no significant uh, difference there. Plant dry matter, which is A, increased steadily over time for both fertilizer types. Marginal differences shown between day 22 and day 66. And we can kind of see that, um, day 69, I'm sorry. We can see that from here um, to basically day 69 right here. Again, plant dry matter, we're seeing very marginal differences, but not really anything too significant. We're going to get to B, uh, okay, down here for um, leaf area per plant, the interaction of fertilizer type and days after uh, planting was not significant. Fertilizer type was significant with larger leaf area for the mineral treatments compared to the organic treatments. Again, by a slight margin here when you see those different letters. And organic is the green bars and mineral is the um, black and white bars. There is no significant difference between fertilizer types were found for specific leaf area, and that's looking again at uh, letter C here, decreasing trend from day 69 days after planting to a range between uh, 282.3 to 214.2 centimeters squared uh, per gram there. 
Now the least squared means and all the little information here about what you're seeing in these graphs is provided right here, just to give you a little bit of an idea. But we're looking at that kind of veg to flowering is flipping between day 36 and day 54. And we could see differences in trends uh, located here during the vegetative part. What the plants actually look like? Well, this is a kind of a late harvest uh, leaf sample at day 99. Leaves from the different canopy positions and illustrated for the factors fertilizer type, which is uh, vertical, and then fertilizer concentration, which is horizontal. So this is the low end of the fertilizer, the 80, the 160, and the 240. And then we see organic in the top row and uh, mineral here in the bottom row. Note that there was some tip burn at the higher, higher fertilizer concentrations. Uh, so just keep note of that, that there are some toxicity uh, symptoms as well. Looking at the yield difference. So final yield differences, A, was mainly attributed to at least two weeks before harvest when the mineral fertilization had significantly higher inflorescence dry matter than organic treatments. CBD yield um, differences between fertilizer types was lower due to lower CBD concentration with mineral fertilization indicating a possible dilution effect. During the last two weeks before harvest, influence dry matter strongly increased and cannabinoids were accumulated for part C here, presenting a large sink with high simulate nutrient demand there. Again, we see the same coloration difference between our organic and our mineral, and that's referring to no significant difference there. Now, nitrogen forms, you need to keep in mind that one main difference among nitrogen forms and fertilizer types is that organic fertilizers contain higher ratios of the ammonia and the nitrates than mineral fertilizers. So when we're looking at our comparison, you know, the type of nitrogen plays a role. Those ammoniums and those um, nitrates versus those nitrites is going to be very different in how those potentially can be absorbed by the plant and what the odds are of them leaching or denitrifying there. Uh, so just keep that in mind that the organic fertilizer can be of the ammonium and the NO3 or the nitrate concentrations. Now NPK levels uh, in the leaves compared to flowers. So kind of an interesting kind of correlation here, blue representing the lower, green the mid, and red the higher fertilization rates. Nitrogen is easily mobile in the plant tissue, which can be observed by the presence of curves of accumulation depletion within nitrogen levels. Phosphorus is also a mobile um, nutrient here. We can see that right here. But movement in the leaves to flowers was not clearly as visible as it was for nitrogen. All treatments reached a plateau for phosphorus around day 69. Uh, at the final harvest, uh, plants of the 80, 60, and 240 accumulated 41.9, 49.7, and 59 milligrams of phosphorus per plant in the leaves, respectively. Uh, phosphorus content in inflorescence was up 4.2 times higher than the leaves. So the flowers compared to the leaves where that's accumulating is a definitely an interesting factor there. And again, this is looking at the leaf column and then the flowers. The accumulation of potassium was similar to, to phosphorus. Only exception, plants for the lowest fertilizer concentration, 80, reached their plateau earlier um, at day 69. So again, a little nice comparison here between what's happening in the leaves compared to what's happening in the flowers. Now, when we're looking at phosphorus fertilization, um, in this study, no significant differences between fertilizer concentrations were found for phosphorus concentrations in the inflorescence at the final harvest. Pea concentration in leaves, stems, and substrate were significantly higher for the highest treatment, uh, indicating overall fertilization with phosphorus at the flowering stage. Maintaining high nutrient levels in leaves and substrates is not relevant at the harvest point, so this is important for consideration uh, that we really want to be mindful of how much fertilizer we're adding uh, because it could lead to negative effects or really just increased cost with no increased benefit in the end product. Now, mineral fertilization generally um, has shows higher nutrient uptake and agronomic uses efficiencies compared to organic treatments, mainly because it's immediately available and it's not really needs to be broken down um, by anything. So keep this in mind that this is an important consideration when we're comparing these fertilizer types. Those organic fertilizers, um, significantly lower plant and inflorescence and dry matter, leaf area, and finally, CBD yield of organic treatments are supported by the general lower nitrogen uptake efficiency, especially in the last two weeks, which is a major sink stage where that nutrients are potentially going to that flower compared to those mineral treatments. So it did kind of wane or did kind of struggle those last two weeks there. 
Now, if you're using organic fertilizers, uh, you should uh, they should be applied earlier and potentially at higher rates than mineral components to be available during those final two weeks of flowering when the sink demand for inflorescence is very high. Try to meet those demands, and because minerals are available so quickly, they can meet those demands and the plant can uptake it right away. Because organics need a little break down time to be absorbed by the plant, um, applying a little bit more, especially paying attention to those final two weeks right before harvest, could be important to maintain quality yields. Now, the best of both worlds, you know, a higher availability of mineral fertilizers can be important for plant initial growth, while organic fertilizers can be employed as a more suitable, sustainable nutrient complement during the flowering stage without major yield losses. It's kind of playing to the strengths of both. Using mineral fertilizers for that quick kind of available, and using organic fertilizers for that longer, more sustained growth uh, for the plant. Now, take home message here when we're looking at fertilizer concentration. The fertilizer concentration of 160 uh, produced 95% of the CBD yield compared to the highest rate, which is 240, while receiving one third less nutrients. So if you can get 95% of the yield with a third less nutrients, um, that can really help the profitability standpoint. That can really help you know, maximizing yields by minimizing inputs. Now, organic fertilizer usage, if you're going to be using this source, um, you may have to add more on than someone else using mineral-based fertilizers because of the lower nutrient uptake efficiency, so you have to keep that in mind. And the nutrient acquisition was lower for organic fertilizer during the final two weeks before harvest, resulting in reduced biomass and CBD yield compared to mineral fertilizer treatments. Now, when we're looking at phosphorus uh, fertilizer here, nothing against any of these, but be mindful of the amount of phosphorus that you're adding. Uh, the fertilizer rate for phosphorus can be generally reduced during the end of flowering to avoid unproductive nutrient accumulation in the vegetative plant organs. So that's especially mindful if you're using these very high bloom-based fertilizers that have 50, 55, 45% phosphorus. Plants don't need as much phosphorus as many growers have been led to believe. And this study continues to prove that, showing that it doesn't really help the flowers at all. It does accumulate in the stems and the leaves, but those typically are plant parts that growers are not really looking at harvesting or receiving any benefit from. So cut down on your phosphorus fertilizer. You can help reduce your chance at environmental contamination, reduce your cost, and still maintain the same yields.